I'm just going to talk a little bit about the editorial process, focusing mainly on what our process is at Science, but I think um, much of this would be applicable to other journals as well. First of all, just to show you the editors, and this is not meant to um, introduce you to them in any real way. You can go to our website and um, get introduced to our editors, but just to show you that they are live people behind the decisions, um, live caring people, hopefully. <laughs> Um, and then moving on to um, what makes a science paper, what are we looking for in science papers? Well, our goal uh, is that we publish papers that are influential in their field, papers that will significantly advance scientific understanding. We want papers that have novel and broadly important data or, or syntheses of, of data or present new concepts and that merit recognition by a very broad scientific community. So I think it's important to say that for us, the priority is how, how um, important it is that this paper should be presented to a broad readership, because we have um, very strict constraints on how many papers we can take, and so we, we're seeking to choose those that have really high priority for presentation to a very broad audience. That means there are many outstanding papers that we can't take because we would view them as probably more appropriate for um, a more specialized audience, although very important to that audience. And just um, with that in mind, um, we will be starting a new journal next year called, called Science Advances, which hopefully will be a great home for those papers. So our principles of selection, what we're looking for, first of all, the first thing we're looking at is quality. So basically, this is a bar the papers have to cross. We want to publish high-quality research. Um, but high-quality um, is, is not enough. We're also looking that that paper is not just high-quality, but it, as I said before, it has broad scope, it has broad interest, or it's very novel. But if the quality is not there, we would not let any of the others um, outweigh that. So what helps? Firstly, and most importantly, it must be exciting science. That's, um, you know, you, you're not going to, well, hopefully no one is, is going to sort of con their way into science. There has to be exciting science. Um, then what we're looking at, if the science is really exciting, is the data convincing? Are all the appropriate controls in place? Is the presentation careful? Um, have all viable alternatives been considered? This is when you're sort of in your discussion. Are you allowing different, in, are you considering other possible interpretations? Um, I think in that, um, I have to emphasize the importance of that careful presentation, which is um, so much of what Barbara just talked about. And we see so, so many scientists who've obviously spent years doing the work that is presented in a science paper, but the presentation just um, doesn't rise to the level of the scientific work that's been done. And so just always remember, you know, you're, this is your one chance to present your work. And people looking at, for, at, at it for the first time are not as engaged in it as you are. Um, their first reading of the paper is going to be the impression that they take away. So what doesn't help? Um, what I've got below are um, very common reasons for rejection of papers of science. Um, one is that the most exciting part of the paper is not well supported. So what we'll get is a paper, a very nice, solid paper that could um, be in a really good journal but wouldn't quite rise to the interest level for science. And then it will have a sort of a few preliminary experiments pointing in a very exciting direction. But we would need um, that, those, that exciting part to also be substantiated well. Very commonly, it's not a sufficient advance over previous work. Of course, this is a little bit subjective. Um, and there, in considering if something is a sufficient advance, we're really looking at you know, how much impact is this going to have on the field or a specific finding that is not generalizable. So um, 
this is one we deal with a lot, and it's one of co- another one when, where, of course, there's a lot of um, subjective um, decision making to a certain extent, but where, where somebody gets a really exciting finding in a very specific case, and then try that. The question there is: Is this going to turn into something very important, or is it a, a sort of a side um, case that, that's only applicable in this specific instance? So once the paper gets in, what is the process at Science? Well, we have several people involved in the review process. Internally, we have staff editors. Externally, we have a board of reviewing editors. And then if the paper goes out to in-depth review, we have our referees. So the papers come in, and the initial step will be that they'll be read by the science editorial staff. They'll be assigned to an editor. And they'll be sent to one of our board of reviewing editors who gets about 48 hours to look at the paper. So the thing to remember here is at Science, we do have a cover letter. The first thing the editor who gets the paper is reading is the cover letter and the abstract. They will go on to read the whole paper, but their initial impression will be made from reading that cover letter and abstract. And so you never want to be fighting a bad impression. The better those are written, the better the impression is going into the reading of the paper. Both the editor and the board of reviewing editors are handling many, many papers. And so um, our initial read of a paper may be only 30 minutes um, before we decide how much more deeply to engage with that paper. So a clear paper is key. What the Board of Reviewing Editor does is comments on whether the scope and focus of the paper are appropriate for science. And they give a scale of how interested they are and and also a brief written comment. Then um, every every paper at Science has a handling editor. This is the editor who would be closest to the field of the paper, handles papers in that field, and they make all the final decisions um, carry out all the logistics, but they do this all in collaboration with their colleagues. And so we're seeing more and more multidisciplinary papers where we really need input from several editors in order to make decisions. So the manuscripts have been submitted. They've been through the initial process. At that stage, about 20% of manuscripts are selected to go on to in-depth review. And here I want to stress that when we send papers to in-depth review, it means that um, we support that paper. Now, whether it uh, it, it won't necessarily ultimately get published, but our goal in in going to peer review is not to kill the paper. Our goal in peer review is to make sure standards are maintained and to make the paper as good as it can be. Um, A lot of times we do find reviewers really giving input that um, improves the paper. So how do we select these referees? Um, every meeting I go to, I get told about mean reviewers and how bad the reviewing process is. Um, and I have to remind scientists that the same people doing the complaining are the people doing the reviewing. So um, these are just the same people wearing two hats. And it's um, sort of strange to see the difference between them. But anyway, how we select is um, just our own experience suggestions from the Board of Reviewing Editors that saw, the, that saw the paper, our own records, how we've used that person before, whether they were a good reviewer or not, whether they were prompt, whether, whether they were thorough. Um, we will do web and literature searches, and we do look at the suggested and excluded list from the authors, and we do honor exclusions, um, except if there's some really exceptional case where we feel we just cannot. Um, if we get sort of 20, or 20 reviewers excluded, we can't honor that. Um, and we try and have referees with a variety of experience levels, a variety of backgrounds and nationalities. So I thought it would just be um, helpful to just say what we see as a useful review, because many of the listeners here maybe one day doing reviews and also just helps to see what are we looking for in a review. 
Well, we find a short synopsis of the paper very helpful. It just shows that we're all on the same page. Um, what you saw in the paper, what another reviewer saw in the paper, it can be very interesting um, to see the differences. Then an, an, an analysis of the quality of the experiments and the validity of the interpretations, suggestions of future experimental directions. But it's really important that when reviewers make suggestions, um, they make it clear whether these are things that are really required to support the, the um, interpretations in the paper or if these would be um, sort of just nice directions for the future. And then discuss what impact the paper would have in its own field and in a broader context. And um, of course, look, you know, anything that might should have been cited and wasn't, um, and if a reviewer is kind enough to comment on the presentation, that's nice. So how many referees do we get? Well, until recently, it was usually two. Um, now, often, it's three or more because papers are so interdisciplinary. We try not to go through rounds after rounds of review. We try and be decisive. Um, about 90% of rejected papers are rejected after one round of review. If, we if we're deciding to accept, there can need to be two rounds, especially when um, data is added, because any additional data um, does need to be reviewed. And they're just um, sort of how we see the importance of the peer review process. To us, this is very integral to science publication. and we and the authors and the reviewers are partners in trying to get the best papers um, out to our broad readership. Now on my next slide, I'm just showing the process again um, from submission, going through in-depth review. Um, our publication rate at the moment is probably hovering just a little bit above 6%, maybe at around 7% now. Um, as I said, we, it's, it's, it's very, very tough. We're constrained um, by the number, of the number of pages we can publish every week, um, and the number of submissions we get just keeps on rising. With that, thank you, and best of luck.